All right, hey everybody, and welcome to Chew Stream, where we talk about art and life as an artist. I'm your host, Bobby Chu, and today is week eight of the 90 Minute Art Challenge. It's been awesome. I see more and more entries coming in, more and more people participating every week, so I have a whole bunch of really great art to show you guys this week. What is the 90 Minute Art Challenge? Some of you might ask. Complete an illustration in 90 minutes based on an image given. Uh, the link to the image is in the video details below. Now, do you have to stick to 90 minutes? Some people are asking. You don't necessarily, you know, this is for us to have some fun and to really learn, improve our skills. 90 minutes, that is the challenge. Of course, if you want to go over 90 minutes, uh, under 90 minutes, that's totally up to you. You know, I suggest at least 90 minutes. And 90 minutes is something that we should all be able to do weekly, regularly, weekly, uh, at least. Many of us are going daily. So questions. If you have any questions, you could go to slido.com, hashtag ChewStream, and I can already see a bunch of questions. Uh, you could ask your question, or you could read the other questions and vote up your favorite questions so that they will be answered first. Also, we have Discord. And you can find the Discord details, the Slido details, all these questions in the details of this video. Okay, and you can join us on Discord as well. Now, before we go on any further, just a reminder to subscribe to this channel so that you can find this channel again. Also, hit the notification button so you'll be notified when there's a new video. <laughs> I was playing a video, Discord people, <laughs> so you couldn't hear me. So um, I appreciate you checking in, but when you do that, then you're going live, but that's okay. This is just for fun, right? So I was just saying to subscribe to this channel, to the YouTube channel, so that you won't miss a thing uh, when we do another stream or another video or I upload another video, stuff like that. All right, so... Let me just put it out there first. I did the 90 minutes, but as I was approaching the one hour mark, I was like, I really kind of like this idea. I really want to go further. Um, so I would say approximately 20 minutes into it, you will see where I got to in 90 minutes. Now, altogether, how much time did I spend on this? That would probably be a better little bit of information to give you. Um, I took a little bit under seven hours to complete this entire image. And uh, yeah, for those of you that are like, that little reference image is too small, you could just go to the details in the video and download this um, image right there. And that's what we're using. We're using John Singer Sargent's painting here to inspire us. All right. and. Uh, I would love to know where everybody's from. Give a bunch of shout outs. And while everybody piles in where they're all from, I want to show some of the amazing, incredible art that was handed in uh, this week. Okay, so here we go. Check these out. Such, oh, yeah, this person came out of nowhere. Herwiswalt, incredible studies. This person did pretty much all of them in such beautiful, inspiring ways. Oh, this one's probably my favorite. This one is of um, Harley Quinn, I'm assuming, or a female Joker, perhaps. Fantastic. Very, very cool. And then a bunch of other incredible, incredible illustrations, all inspired. Look at that one, it's just beautiful. Beautiful color mixing and everything. Um, all inspired by that weekly reference that we do. And a bunch of these are from weeks past, so you don't have to necessarily start where I'm starting. I wouldn't even suggest that. I would suggest starting from the beginning because some of you might have noticed that these images, they get harder. They get progressively just a tiny bit harder every time, and this is from Next week's image, all right. Uh, somebody was very quick with that. And next week's image is this beautiful little monkey photo. Um, same time, 
next week, same channel. So don't forget to uh, go to the details of this video that you're watching now. At the very bottom, you'll find the link to the next video, the next challenge. And you can join me there. All right. And one thing that you might have noticed as well is like, wow, Bobby likes to draw a lot of women. He's been picking a bunch of women uh, images to study from. Actually, that's what I kind of fear the most. You know, that's the kind of stuff that I am the most reluctant to paint. And that's exactly why I'm painting it. Somebody was asking, where uh, do we have to follow the same study as you? No, you don't. But if you want to study exactly what I'm studying, I'm not doing this to have you guys study. Let's get that straight. You know, this isn't something for me to go, okay, yeah, I'm going to try to get everybody to study these images. No, this is an invitation for you to join me as I study. So this is what I'm studying this week. This is what I'm studying next week, and so on and so forth. So if you want to do the same thing, you know, a lot of times it's like, how do you become a billionaire you hang out with billionaire friends and you do what they do <laughs> you know so if you want to become a professional artist a lot of times the best thing to do is do what other professional artists do and that's what i'm inviting you guys to do all right so as i was talking i see just a million people texting you know writing in where are they from so i want to give some big shouts out here to fort worth texas mexico japan japan uh colombia turkey where are we going here romania ireland brazil japan again portugal netherlands uk that's awesome we have a bunch of uh japanese uh, artists on here Ukraine Indonesia Brazil Brazil's always happening Oxford UK Russia Mexico Brazil Switzerland uh, Atlanta Markham that's just up the street from where I am Chicago uh, Georgetown Kentucky Amsterdam the Netherlands uh, Italy Orlando Sao Paulo South Africa Poland Belgium Germany Ukraine bunch of Ukrainians that's fantastic a bunch of Russians awesome a bunch of Brazilians and Texans and Mexicans and Indonesians excellent Singapore Italy Paris India Brazil the list goes on and on and on and on I'm just gonna stop right there oh my god but that's so great to see I also notice that there is over 700 entries, 700 90 minute art challenges that have been posted, right? And uh, wow, that, that's just been incredible. Um, so yeah, let's go on to some questions. And why don't we start off with my wonderful people waiting so patiently in Discord. Um, maybe we could go to you guys first. Does anybody have a question in Discord? Hi. Hey. What's uh, your name? Where are you from? I'm from Japan, and I, I my name is Naoki. Fantastic. Hi, Naoki. Hi. Um, because I have a couple of questions. And, sure. Uh, if that's all right. Of course. Yeah. Okay. It's like um. The first one is. Uh, by the way, I was very, very like eager to be on this uh, Discord, so thank you for having me. Yay! <laughs> I'm so glad. Yes. Um, it's that uh, I started drawing a couple of years ago. I think it's like two years ago now. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I've been like drawing every day since and have never stopped. And I've seen a lot of improvements. And uh, I think it's time for me to go to the next step. Wonderful. And uh, I was just wondering, when do you recommend to have like a personal mentorship? Right away, as soon as you can. Like, um, if you are not, if you're not gonna put yourself into any kind of problems, like, oh, should I eat or should I get a mentor? 
<laughs> then if you're not in one of those situations, then I would say get a mentor as soon as you can. It's just like if you like to exercise, you get a trainer as soon as you can. Most people, they yeah. don't. And then they will grow a lot slower, but they'll grow, but they'll grow a lot slower. Right? When you get mentors all the time, holy cow, you learn something every week. Get a mentor as soon as you can. Oh, wow. Okay. So, like, um, because, like, you said that, like, if you don't struggle to eat to get a mentor. Yes. If not, I'm actually, like, uh, stranded in Japan right now because of the corona situation. Yes. And, uh, like, because I usually live in Norway. Oh, okay. But I uh, went to Japan a year ago to like, travel. Uh huh. And then I was like kind of stuck here because of the corona situation. Yeah. And when I planned to go back to Norway, uh, my plan was actually to uh, try to work and study art at the same time. Uh -huh. So I have a limited amount of money that I can use. Mm -hmm. So I was like really like uh, considering to, for example, go to some art school or take uh, schoolism. Or then even get a mentorship but like how should i balance out my how should i say it because i still lack some fundamentals yes and should i like go and study those fundamentals first before or should i just like go straight to the mentor even though i haven't like grasped the fundamentals completely i'll, I'll tell you a little secret i i have not grasped the fundamentals completely you will never really? grasp the fundamentals completely. Yeah, because there's some people that just try to master one part of the fundamentals all their life, like color, and just really trying to understand color, right? And then if you think about it, every different kind of art discipline has different art fundamentals. So if you are doing sci-fi, you're doing a lot of mech, uh, robots and vehicles, then that's going to have different fundamentals than, say, painting characters, you know, soft bodied, hairy characters. <laughs> uh, however, there will be a bunch of fundamentals that they'll all share. How does light work in this place? How does atmosphere affect the image? Things like that. But it would affect those different subjects differently so everything has its own fundamentals um, and having a trainer in the beginning having a mentor in the beginning to help you with those fundamentals that's like if you learn karate by yourself or if you studied with a teacher in the beginning you know what I mean you can still learn how to punch and you will be able to punch and kick harder with practice but with a mentor, you'll be able to learn it better and a lot more um, correctly with a lot of correct information and a lot of problems that you will find yourself heading towards. That mentor will be able to look at it and go, you're going in this direction. You need to go in this direction. This is how you do it. You know, and um, of course, I would absolutely, I would absolutely 100% 10,000% recommend schoolism because right now there is a sale and it's affordable for artists, for the art community. That's why, you know, I created it. However, if you don't have money, that's totally fine too. This is why I do these streams for free, you know, and just trying to um, put it out there, uh, uh, ways for people to learn, even if they don't have money. Um, so, Hopefully there's no more, there's no excuses for anybody out there, you know? And, and for you, I could tell you work really hard because you were saying you've been just practicing nonstop for like two years. So I, I would say if you can get a mentor, I would absolutely get a mentor. If you could do schoolism classes, I would do schoolism classes. Just try it out, you know? And honestly, if you do not like it, you anybody, I'm just saying this to anybody, if anybody doesn't like it, and you tried it for, you know, a couple days, and you don't think it's worth 
the $30 a month or the $200 for a year, then absolutely write in and ask for a refund. We're not, you know, we're not doing this um, just to make money or something. It, it, we make money, of course, it's a business, but it's more than that. It's for the art community. So we have no problem, you know, giving people refunds if they don't find it helpful as well. So no more excuses for anybody. <laughs> That's cool, because like uh, I came across coolism a month ago, I think. Yes. And I've been really like eager to start it, but I haven't like I don't have the financial situation to start it yet. Yes. So I'm just like waiting. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really eager to try it out. Yeah. And, well, uh, I. Well, we only have uh, two sales a year. And right now, the sale that's happening right now will end in, I guess, a about a little bit over two weeks. Yeah. And um, last question. Sure. And uh, this is uh, more specifically to you personally, I think. Okay. It's that like, uh, because I'm 20 years old right now. Yes. So I started uh, drawing very, very late, actually. No, you didn't. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, yeah, uh, but like, if you were to lose all your drawing abilities, drawing, uh, drawing ability mileage, yes, around my age, how would I do it? Had, like, how would you do it? Yes, and how I know exactly how, how long, I would do this. I would. How long would it take for you to become a professional again? Do you think? Uh, I don't think very long. I think I could, I could earn, um, if I went back to absolute zero, right? I think I could start to get little, not so good art jobs in one year. And this is saying from zero, like, what is this? Oh, it's called a pencil. I make marks like this. If I knew how to learn but I didn't know anything about art anymore. I still knew how I, how I learn now. I feel like I could get small little art jobs by the end of the, within a year. And then in three years, I feel like I could get into games, television, movies, things like that. And then in five years, the top, top movies, the top, top games and things like that. Now, that's to say that I am very diligent with my time. I don't have any other distractions. Um, number one is, like what I was just telling you, I would get a mentor, right? And uh, this mentor, especially if I'm, you know, in my 20s or younger, I go to an older mentor I offer whatever I can offer. I will wash your dishes. I will mow your lawn. I will, you know, garden your flowers and things like that. Teach me one hour a week. Look at my art. You know, hopefully they'll do more. And then from there, I would start to look up in the internet different <laughs> phrases. Okay. I would look up things like uh, Dutch Flemish masters you know and then usually uh, google will give you a bunch of names as well uh, i would look up things like animal uh, wildlife national geographic photographers maybe and i start getting reference of how brilliant photographers you know uh, create their beautiful photos of animals and i just start doing that, that with all these different categories uh, you know, impressionist painters, um, all those things, and start collecting a lot and a lot of images, um, targets to aim for. And then with all of these targets, I would start to uh, study one after the other in the same way that I'm studying now, and then show my mentor. You know, I would Actually, I wouldn't even study it like how I'm studying now because if I'm starting starting from the very, 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 very beginning, then 
I would say all of these studies would be just drawings right now because I'm trying to learn structure. I'm trying to learn pers perspective and proportions, uh, things like that. And then get into lighting without color and then getting into color at the very end and always going to photos, always going to life, always going to other artists, studying each one of these for extended periods of time in a way where I'm studying it so that I am pretending that I need to teach this later in front of 50 people and, and I won't have any reference. So I don't want to look like, you know, um, a stupid person. <laughs> I'm going to want to learn this very well, right? In a way where I'm not just copying anymore. I'm trying to understand it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's wow. it. Five years, you will be, if you're every day, eight hours a day, you will be a legend in five years, I think. Absolutely. Thanks, because that's actually the time that I have given myself. It's uh, five years. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, and I have, and there's this friend of mine, he's a lot better than me at drawing because he's been drawing since he was basically two years old. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. So I'm like really inspired, but thank you. Thanks uh, so much for your advice, by the way. A lot of times the people that struggle more or remember the struggle more tend to appreciate life more and tend to go further. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. Thank you so much for your call. Yes, all right. Take care. Bye. How do I do this? Wonderful. My first call from Japan. That was so much fun. All right. So I see there's a, there's a bunch of other people that have joined on Discord. So why don't we go to, does anybody else on Discord have a question? I can see that Mel doesn't have her mic on, so do you have a question, Mel? Okay, I guess not. So we're going to go to Slido now. I'm going to go to the top question here, and this is by Kamui. Kamui asks, Bobby, if you have all day long to practice every day for a year, how would you divide your time between master studies, online classes, and drawing for fun? Fantastic. Online studies would be the beginning part of my week, right? And I would keep going into that over and over again. If I was super diligent, if you are super diligent, I would keep playing that same lesson all week. And while I do master studies, while I just draw for fun and let it absorb into your brain. Uh, I was talking with one of my best buddies in the whole entire world and uh and this person was playing this video game a lot and then i asked this person i was like have you had any dreams about the video game playing the video game and this person was like oh yeah you mean like it just seeps in in my dreams yeah and then i, I was like okay yeah maybe you're playing it too much um, but that's how we want our practices to be. That's how we want our painting to be. If you are dreaming about painting and drawing, oh, right on, huge, huge thumbs up to you because now you've gotten to that level, you know, where it's like you have engulfed yourself into art and what a beautiful thing that is. Uh, yeah, so I, I would... Do the class, keep playing. If it was a schoolism class, there's feedback as well. And when there's feedback, you could watch uh, your instructor paint over top of other people's paintings, correcting what they did wrong, answering their questions. M you know, so many of the times it's like uh, the questions that they might have asked totally pertain to you. You just didn't realize, you didn't think of it. Uh, so I would play those as well, you know and just keep playing them as you do your master studies, as you do your 90 minute study, things like that, uh, art challenge. Uh, 
and drawing for fun, just keep playing it because that's what I do. And I'll keep trying to relate what I'm doing to the lesson of the week, to really practice it all the time in different ways until it really becomes embedded and becomes a part of me. If you do that every day, if you've been doing the art challenge with me every week, this is week eight. I can guarantee it's like 99.9% .9 of you are going to say, yeah, I learned, I learned a bunch of stuff. I've improved. I can feel it. Things are bubbling to the surface, if not already emerged, already obvious, the difference uh, between how you're painting before and how you're painting now. So that's why it's like, even if you got something to do, even if you're busy, even if you don't like practicing that much, it's good for you, like vegetables, eat it, <laughs> do it anyways, and you, you won't regret it. I don't think anybody really would regret doing a study, right? Going through that process. It's like exercise. We might hate it in the beginning. We don't want to do it. But when we're done, we feel pretty good, especially these kinds, because it's like it's a 90 minute art challenge. After 90 minutes, you should have something. And it's nice. It's nice to have something done. Right? Okay, let's go on to the next question here. Uh, yeah, why don't we go back to Discord and give you 10 seconds? <laughs> Does anybody have a question on Discord? Hello, Bobby. Hello. From Mexico. Hi, what's your name? I didn't hear the name part. Sorry. Um... Is it Sarah? OK. Is the microphone working OK? Okay. Hello, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you now. And then I can't. Okay. You know what? Work on it. We'll come back and we'll check on, on Discord, okay? Right now, I'm going to go to a Slido question. And that is from Anonymous this time. Anonymous is asking, I'm looking for an art job, but I keep sending in my portfolio and hearing nothing back. How do you deal with feeling rejected and discouraged? Okay, I, I appreciate the question. Let's deal with the problem first. Okay, the problem is that you're not hearing anything back. Now, if you thought to yourself, um, how much have you changed the approach? What things are you doing differently? Uh, if there's a lot of stuff that's different all the time, then you have a much better chance of heading towards the right direction. So, for example, if you're just handing stuff in, hi, I'd like a job, take a look at my portfolio, and you did this to a thousand people and you didn't hear one response back, it's probably your email, it's probably your portfolio, it might be both. So let me try again. Okay, let me, you know, write up a different email. Let me work on my portfolio again. Uh, if you, I feel like if you work hard in each of your approaches and each of your approaches, you're giving it time to really think, think logically and think, okay, what did I do that time? Why don't I think it worked? What was that person's experience like? And uh, what would I like their experience to be? Right? If you're constantly thinking like that, then you will maneuver in the right direction, hopefully. Almost you know, guaranteed. You, would, you might bang around a bunch of times, still get some errors, still get some rejections and stuff. But eventually, you would head in the right direction. Um, so that's why I would recommend, okay, 
to keep thinking about your approach. What are you doing? And if you are willing to put your heart and soul, maximum effort, maximum passion, all that stuff into each one of those portfolios, each time you hand it into a company, if you hand in 10 portfolios into that company and, and you are ready for 10 horrible rejections, you know, maximum effort, maximum passion, all that stuff, you will not get to that 10th rejection before something great happens. Now, if you're just half-assing it and you're not putting in full effort, full logic, full, you know, maximum potential, then you might try a thousand times and you will still not get it. And you will probably, by that time, they would know you so well, they would for sure say, this person is never getting in. You know, because we don't want robots. We don't want people that just keep doing this like, here you go, here's my portfolio. I'm gonna send the same email to you know, 90 companies, same portfolio to 90 companies. Nah, I don't, you might get work that way. You might succeed, but it's not the best way. Uh, in my opinion, you know, everybody does things differently. How I do things is I don't try to do shotgun blasts everywhere where like here's 10,000 little portfolios in this direction, this direction, this direction. I like to think about it like I'm a sniper. I have my target. It's that company. I'm going to study my target, find out what they need, what they want, and deliver that. Boom. One shot. Right? It, you can go a lot further that way. You can get a head start in your career that way. Because you're not just kind of, kind of just spraying out your art everywhere and seeing where does it stick. Um, now, how do you deal with the feeling of rejection and discouragement? Well, those things stink because you're not in control of it. You know, people could reject you and you don't fully feel in control. Of that. You can do some things. You can act differently. You can, you know, learn things. You can evolve. You can improve. But in the end, whether or not they reject you, it's up to them. But can we say that uh, if you're constantly improving, if you're constantly learning, can we say that, yeah, just about like 99.99% of the time, you will succeed? I kind of want to say 100% of the time, you will succeed because in the end, um, success can come in many different ways. Right, say you wanted to work at Pixar and that was your number one goal, but you don't end up working at Pixar, but you create a movie where it's at the same caliber, the same level as that beloved company that you want to work for so much. That is also succeeding in my books, right? And so how do you deal with failure and all that stuff? How do I deal with it? The only failure there is, the only discouragement or you know that kind of stuff, I could feel is when I'm not trying my hardest. Um, yeah, plain and simple. If I'm not trying my hardest, then I failed myself. And if I am trying my hardest and I'm thinking about it logically, I put in my passion, put in my effort. If you're doing that out there, then you are absolutely a thousand percent heading in the right direction. And if you get rejected, that's a little bit of bad luck, you know, especially when you're ready, you deserve it and you get rejected. Fine. That's a little bit of bad luck, but I'm still going to rethink. I'm still going to think about everything that I did logically and think, is there anything I should have done differently? Approach it differently. Even if you're already ready, you can always sharpen that samurai sword just a bit more, you know, and if you keep getting rejected, then that just means that the ceiling is about to burst. 
you know, when you learn enough, you get good enough, the whole world has no choice but to notice us. They have no choice because you get good enough, you get, you know, you improve enough, you're thinking about things logically, you keep climbing up that ladder of now you were the 1% of all artists. Now you're the 0.1%. Now you're the 0.0001% of the top artists doing that thing. The whole world will have no choice but to notice you. And when they do, if they, if they take that long to notice us, so by the time they notice us, we're already at that level then the trajectory becomes so much more faster, right? And you just kind of spread out virally. Uh, and then all of a sudden, in a month, everybody knows you. I've seen these things happen. I, I, I've seen them happen over, you know, 15 years of like running my studio, being a professional, um, yeah, so keep going and think about uh, think about this f uh, failure and rejection differently. Only you can fail yourself. People can tell you they don't want you, but that doesn't mean that you're failing. You're still heading in the right direction if you're working hard. All right. I like that question because that's something I have a lot of passion for. There were a lot of times where it was like, I felt like that should have been the thing. That should have been the thing to take me to that next level, but I didn't get it. Or the movie didn't come out. Most of the time it's because the movie didn't come out. I worked on all these movies and nobody knows, you know, except for the people I worked with. But eventually something will. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go back to Discord. Hey, Discord people. Any uh, questions here? Hello. Hi, Bobby. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go first? It's okay. You okay. go first. You go first. Uh, uh, me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> uh, hello, Bobby. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. What's your name? Where are you from? Uh, my name is uh, Ignacio. Ignacio. I'm from Brazil. Fantastic. Wonderful. This, this is, uh, actually, this is the third time I came here to ask you a question. Oh, fantastic. I, I think I'm being selfish. I don't know. It's okay. Be selfish. Okay. I think everybody benefits from good questions anyways. Okay. So the rest of the stream, you're going to answer? Just you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Uh, you basically you alone in, the, in this stream I, I learned like a ton already so thank you for that and I wanted to ask you what's the mo uh, what was the most uh, useful advice like you you ever had during your career oh um yeah, actually, the most useful advice has been more like just examples. It's advice that I, I pieced together myself by watching my grandmother. Yeah, you know, my grandmother, she's 102. 102 this year, my friend. Jesus Christ. You know, so when she was born... That was the Spanish flu in 1918. 50 million Hard people time. died. 50 million people. 5% of the world almost. Where did it? Uh, uh, she was in China. China. She was in China. And it was pretty much, what's that? 1918, that's like uh, end of World War I. Right? I think, uh, yeah, yeah. It goes in depression. The depression is uh, 1929 or something like that. Goes through depression. Goes through World War II in her 20s. Right? And then, yeah. um, 
and a lot of people were killed of course a lot of chinese people were killed uh as well huge amounts they would get their heads chopped off and kicked into a hole and then these giant holes anyways horrific things after world war ii she uh she's encouraged to move to taiwan for job opportunities right and when she moves there then china becomes communist and she's not allowed back ever she's not allowed to even write a letter to her family and she can't talk to her family for 50 years china was pretty hard huh? i yeah. didn't know that yeah you know the world is hard in so many different ways but that was that was china's kind of version and then she was in taiwan and then you know uh, starts her own family and all this stuff. By the time she could talk with her uh, family again, it's 50 years later, right? Now, why am I telling you this? It's because she's one of the most happiest people I've ever met. She's just always happy. She's always smiling. And she's one of the people that have had the most hardships ever that I've ever, ever met. And now she's going through, you know, she's, uh, I'm not allowed to see her. Um, the whole world is going through another pandemic. Yeah. And now she's 102. You know what I mean? And she's still happy. She's still, you know, thankful. And that's, that's the best lesson I ever learned. The best advice that I ever learned. Because when you are, it changes everything, doesn't it? Right? When... Yeah, you you to talk about passion yeah yeah passion but also just like the appreciation for life life you know there's there's so many unhappy rich people out there and then there's so many such happy wonderful people that don't have any money yes so like you're working on all the best projects in the world the best top movies the best top games are you happy? It's not guaranteed. It, and so it's like find your happiness from inside, right? And work on yourself and un just appreciate that we're all alive here together. It's awesome. You you kind of remember you remember one thing that uh, the uh, there is a movie I think the Life is Good made by an Italian actor oh he, yes yeah life yeah, is he, beautiful he was, yes 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 he was a street uh, in the oscars when he got his uh when he was on the stage he said to all the people like uh, i want to thank you this person this person but i would like to thank the most my fathers because uh, poverty was the biggest gift i ever received something like that that's fantastic and i think that's amazing i think about that all the time i was just thinking about that yesterday um yeah later today i'm gonna i'm going to record a, an interview with this other artist and i know this artist and he told me his story and it's very interesting because he was saying that his parents have been nothing but amazing bought him this, yeah. bought him that, w whatever you need to fulfill your dreams. You want to be an artist? Wonderful. I will encourage you. I will support you. And he talked to me about how that was, he saw that as kind of a disadvantage almost because he, he knew that he didn't have to work as hard as other people, right? And that actually, because he knew that, because he thought of it, kind of like as a disadvantage it had the opposite effect for him and made him really work even harder than the other people because he knew that that was kind of like it's harder for him to work harder that was his disadvantage <laughs> isn't that funny yeah, kind of like strange it is strange it you know um i've also it yeah I've also seen where some people, maybe they're, they look a certain way and they're just blessed with 
uh, you know, n nicer looks and things. Uh, art, you don't see a photo of the artist beside your painting all the time. So it doesn't matter if you're super good looking or not anymore. But I, it's interesting. It's just interesting seeing how some people that I might meet, it's like they're used to that. I could tell they're used to that, to wor the world kind of being a bit more welcoming than say somebody that doesn't feel as attractive, you know, and they see that as a disadvantage. They start working on their art so much and their art becomes even better and better and better. And now all of a sudden the art is what attracts people. It's just, I think like everything could be a disadvantage or it could be an advantage. And it just really depends on how we think about it, right? I don't even know where this all started from, but yeah, it's interesting kind of thoughts to think about. Yeah, yeah. You, you, thank you. Thanks so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, yeah, I miss Brazil. I used to yeah, go stay there every safe, year. Bro. Yeah, hey, you too. You too. Take care. I will never forget about passion. Yeah. Wonderful. I, I hope right. our paths will meet in the future and we could share I more fun stories. All right, let's go to uh, another question on Discord. Anybody else? Hi, Bobby. Hi. Hi, it's Gold Mary from Mexico. <laughs> hi. Hi, Gold Mary. Um, hi. Uh, I wanted to know what are your views on contemporary art and if you think there's a way to incorporate it to a studio, quote unquote, studio portfolio? Uh, um, maybe like the influence of contemporary art. Okay. But yeah, that one's more difficult because it's like, uh, you know, could I take my entertainment art portfolio to try to get into fine art? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Probably too representational for many galleries, right? Yeah, I guess, I guess what's so interesting uh, about contemporary art mm -hmm. uh, nowadays, I think it's that it really talks a lot about um, uh, the problems in the world and the situations that are happening that we typically don't see from our personal bubble. Uh, and I think it would be very interesting to incorporate some of that into uh, a more like, like entertainment art approach. Yeah. Uh you know, like something that comes to mind is when I think it was Ai Weiwei did this this uh, installation where it's like all these different backpacks or something. And it's just displayed yeah, in a way that. where, yeah, it was like very impactful. I could see things mm -hmm. like that working its way into a story idea. Yes, I think a lot exactly. of... Exactly, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like I, I... In the end... Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to say that uh, I think that both like contemporary art and let's say uh, portfolio art, uh, they're both like different ways of telling stories, right? So perhaps there could be a way to like mix them together. Yeah, I think so. Uh, definitely. Of course, if I see some contemporary art in somebody's portfolio, I wouldn't, I would think that's kind of interesting if it's really, if it's interesting and well done, um, I would leave it in the back <laughs> of the portfolio. Uh, but it's still a, an important part for me to put in if that was one of my passions. You know, it's always important, I find, to put in something personal that reflects you mm -hmm. and your interests in your portfolio. All right. But also make it very obvious of how, you know, your skills and your your interests and things could make sense uh, mm -hmm. working for that thing that you're applying for. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Wonderful. And do you do you like contemporary art? Yeah. Yeah, it's always right. very mm -hmm. inspiring. Um, 
I think, yeah, I, you know what? Every time I look at contemporary art or like abstract art that really connects with me, I always want to do it. <laughs> I always want to go home and start doing it. Um, hopefully one day I will, because I haven't. <laughs> but thank you so much for your question. Okay, thank you, Bobby. All right, take care. All right, so I want to talk about the painting for a second here. Uh, the painting now, you see that I've I pulled out another image, right? And that image is, oh, shoot, what's her name again? What's the person's name from the older sister from Game of Thrones? The actress. Sophie Turner. Sophie Turner, yes. So I brought out Sophie Turner here because as I was painting this character, I was thinking it kind of gives me a Sophie Turner kind of vibe. So I wanted to add her in there. And, um, you know, I don't really do costume design, so I wanted to kind of take my hand at it, uh, just attempt it. You know, uh, there's been some questions of that, re that go back to like, when will I know that I'm ready? When will I know that I'm ready for a mentor? When will I know that I'm ready to apply for jobs? Uh, and my answer generally is just go for it, just start, you know, and be okay with people saying no, because that's not failure. Failure is when you give up, right? Um, yeah, so I'm just going for it. You know, I, I'm not that comfortable painting women yet. And that's why I've made women so many of the subjects of these challenges. Because uh, I just want to kind of lay out all my weaknesses out there and keep working on them until they disappear. And it's going to be cool because many of you that might have the same kind of uh, struggles and things like that, you're going to be doing this with me and together you're going to, you know, you're going to give me a little bit of that trust and the fact that you know that I'm not wasting my own time, so therefore I'm not going to be wasting your time. And after a bunch of weeks, you're going to see the improvement. I've been seeing the improvement. I'm starting to slowly develop... Um, a style for the women that uh, the women characters I've been going for I've been creating it's coming together but the cool thing is is that we're all gonna see our styles kind of develop together or at least you'll see mine <laughs> so it's gonna be fun all right uh, Slido question here this one's from V so V asks, hi, Bobby, what are the questions that you usually ask yourself before you start a master study to get a better understanding of the painting? Fantastic. Uh, objective. What is my objective here? I'm doing this master study this time. What is my objective this time? Right. And when I'm done this one, I do it again. What is my objective now? And so for me, for this one in particular, my objective was to change the costume, right? I really wanted to take a stab at my own kind of costume designs. Um, you know, and I'll get better at it. I'll get better and better and keep improving. I have no doubt. Yeah, the other... The other part to this painting that really intrigued me was just like the, the, the color, how it would shift, you know, from light to dark, how saturated does it get in those dark values? It doesn't seem to get very saturated at all. Uh, yeah. Either way, I really enjoyed I really enjoyed this one, especially for the costume design aspect of it. It was really fun. Does it make sense to me? 
Not completely. <laughs> I'd have to be totally, you know, I want to be totally transparent in all of these. Like, how much did I like the final product? I, I don't know. I like the technical aspects of it. I like that even though it did take me slightly less than seven hours, I like the fact that it was done in less than seven hours. All right, why don't we go on to another question here. Shall we go back to Discord? Anybody on Discord have a question? Hello, hi, Bobby. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, so thank you for doing this uh, 90 minutes uh, challenge, challenges. Uh, it is a really good exercise so, to go through lighting and gesture and everything. Um, so my question is, uh, uh, regarding story and design. Yes. Uh, how do you, how do you balance the time to, to develop, uh, story, uh, and design? I mean, do you spend the equal time, like 50, 50% or do you spend more time on story, more on design? Do you start with design or with story? Hmm. Interesting. It's not one way or the other. Sometimes it starts off with the story. Sometimes it starts off with just the design, but the two are totally married. You know, you will not. Well, actually, let me think about that. I was going to say you will not create a good design without a good story, but there's just really cool abstract designs. Does that have a story? I wonder. I guess not. Okay, saying no. <laughs> I love it. You could totally speak up if you want to, Kay. I'm sure lots of people... No, totally. I'm sure lots of people would love to hear your opinion about things. You always give me like really good things to think about. Um, yeah, so I, I would say... Yeah, story, well, for entertainment-wise, like uh, movies, television, games, story and the design need to make sense together. Would you say that, Kay? Yes. Yes, Kay says yes. <laughs> that yeah. makes total sense to me. Um, yeah, you would want to, you would definitely want to make sure that you're thinking about story as you're designing for games and television and movies and stuff um but there's, always exceptions. there's always exceptions okay saying there's always exceptions i couldn't agree uh more but the root of it is energy like what feeling are you you know putting out there with the art i don't know if you guys could hear that but um in case saying the most important thing is the energy what kind of energy do you want to put out with that art now that's, you know, now we're getting to some high level, high level stuff, Kay. So I just want to explain to everybody out there, like sometimes this is the thing. Uh, I've seen this with other artists as well. I've, I've always felt like I'm a bit of a slower learner. So that's helped me be able to explain things more. And then some people, they go with such just feeling and like uh there's been times remember Kay, where like i'll show you a piece of art and then you'll be like you know it needs to be cooler like what ha okay how do you make it cooler what should i do <sighs> you know just cooler and then i'll, I'll be well what, what do you mean and you, you know you'll grab the tablet pen from me and then you'll start sketching on my stuff and you'll be like like this like cooler and then you start making this thing look cooler i'm like how did you do that and it's like it's so intuitive you know so when when you're saying you want to think about the energy that you're projecting out there with your design that is quite high level but at the same time i couldn't agree more and to kind of feel the energy that you put out with a piece of art it's kind of like one of those things where you want to put yourself into the viewer's point of view. 
no longer is that your painting and try to put yourself into a point of view of like, okay, I've never seen this thing before. Now I'm looking at it. How do I feel about it? What do you think, Kay? Yes. Stamp of approval from Kay. All right. Awesome. Love it. Thank you so much, Kay. Uh, why don't we go on to another question in Discord? Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Any other questions on Discord? Bobby. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing great. What a great question. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure you and everyone you know are doing well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing great. It's it's been a good day. Oh, that's good. Okay, well, um, I'm Michelle. Um, it's the second time I've asked questions on the stream. Um, just to give you a refresher, I moved to Vancouver last year, and uh, I did a, a drastic life transition going from engineer to artist. Oh, yes. Yes, I do remember. <laughs> so this is my catch-up call to tell you I'm still alive and I'm still kicking and trying my best to be an artist fantastic yeah and um i want to actually ask you um because i recall in your earlier streams you spoke about how you struggled um well not struggled like um when you first started imaginal imaginism studios um you know there was a period where you guys were all cramped into this you know small apartment mm -hmm. and they were uh i think you you didn't want to talk about cleaning swimming pools and i couldn't really patch together the uh chronological events of how this oh. happened but <laughs> when i was but a teenager i i i had a job in a recreational center where i would have to clean swimming pools and um and a hockey rink uh okay and then years later i start my own studio it's in a little apartment Oh, okay. All right. I, I thought that perhaps you took on odd jobs while you were um, trying to get Imaginism Studio started. No, what I did was uh, I took a, I took a non art related job in a television studio in downtown Toronto called Nirvana. And right. so I kind of just hung out there, did my job, saved up money to the point where I felt like I could live very uh modestly for a year mm. or was it six months i forget um and then once i you know saved up enough then i said okay i quit and i'm just going to take on this uh freelance thing full time mm. yeah it's quite you scary made that, <laughs> you made that jump knowing that you perhaps didn't have any clients like that you Build up a reasonable no contact. no so that's very that that's a great thing that you brought that up uh it's very important to try to create a bridge between what you're doing now to what you want to do so as you're doing whatever you're doing now you're trying to slowly create a little rickety bridge to that next level so what does that mean it means like when you're in school you try to learn about the studios and learn who's out there in the studios, who are the people that own the studios, who are the people that you can contact, things like that. And you're creating a bridge to professionalism. And then uh, once you're a professional, maybe you're in environments, you want to get into story or directing, you're going to slowly want to make little bridges towards that as well. And then once you feel like, okay, it's not the best bridge in the world, it's a rickety one, and I have to kind of be careful then at that point, that's where I would usually, you know, go for it. Right? So it was a, a quite a rickety bridge for you before you just, you know, quit your job and, and went, okay, I'm going to be six months yes. to 12 months without an income. I'm going to try my best. So what that means, what the rickety bridge meant for me was like these small um, clients that I would have, right? Where and I'm sure many of us can relate to this, where like if I calculated the time that I spent on the job and how much money I got paid, it was probably half of what minimum wage is. 
Yeah. <laughs> right? And we can all mm. kind of relate to that. Um, and so once I got to that point, that was, that's my rickety bridge that I'm talking about. Uh, it, it, when I was in school, I didn't think about building a transition, like creating a little bridge uh, to become a professional. I just stuck to school. And I just tried to be the best student I could. And that was not good because when I left, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anything about the industry. I knew everything about being a good student. You know, it's strange because I was listening to a Draftsman episode. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, Proko and Marsha were talking about the exact same thing. Because um, people go into debt, going to art school, um, but they kind of miss the point of art school, which is to network and, like you say, build the bridges. Mm -hmm. um, and then they just spend all their money and all their effort and they come out quite bitter because they've, you know, they can't find a job. Well, and also, like, um, I agree with everything that you said. And in the higher kind of, if you went up another 2,000 feet and looked down, school is really it's an investment just like you invest in stocks you invest in a house this is an investment for your future so is it a good investment or is it a bad investment every school is like a different stock you know just because one I is good doesn't mean another one's as good oh for sure i think school is what you make of it right that's definitely worth the investment whatever you put in yourself um, both I would say it's both right really? you, you okay. can you can you can polish a turd really really well until it's nice and shiny but if you do it's a turd that you're working with um, it's only gonna get as shiny as a turd can get uh, you know gotcha. yeah like I've been to some schools where it's like they have a green screen room they have this they have that holy cow and then you go into some schools where it's like Oh yeah, it's just these two rooms for every student. It's like, wow, what a contrast. Right. Okay, I think I lost track of what I was gonna ask, but basically I think I'm a little bit lost and meandering because I made the transition with some savings, um, but not really thinking too much ahead, you know? It's kind mm. of like, this is like a, a break in my life where I, finally had the chance to sit down and think about you know you I, I recall very clearly you said you close one door but then you know there's different doors that open to you which is strange because it did happen that way mm -hmm. um but it is you know it's hard to think what the next step is because i didn't really have the luxury of maybe art school or something to think about what to do next but i think you've given me something to think about do you have a goal? I, uh, yeah, but that goal sucked. I, I can tell you what it is. Sure. The goal is to make a living with my art. Which, okay, yeah, that's that's not a that's very like, specific a goal. goal. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for swearing, but um, like then I had to dig deep and and go like, you know, like a little bit more meta, which is, I want to, uh, tell stories of my art, which, kind of is not that uh, precise anyway. Yeah, it's better though. It's definitely a lot better. Yeah, and then like it went a bit deeper and it, it um, like I want to help people with my journey in art, not that, not necessarily as an art teacher, um, but then, you know, like maybe share my experiences. I want to, if I get to a level, I would want to be able to tutor or mentor people. Well, everything that you're saying right now is great. Um, the next thing that rolls into my head is like, okay, well, if that's your goal, you're going to want to be able to repeat this goal over and over and over again. That takes a living, making it into a living. So how would you be making uh, a living off of telling your stories? Because I'm saying this because uh, there's so many different ways to tell a story nowadays. Right? You can make a film, you can make animation, you can do a web comic, you could just do your Instagram, you know? But if it's just Instagram, how long would I need 
to get to a level where I can make money off of that so I can keep doing it. That takes a lot more, a lot more followers and things like that. Yeah. 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 You know, something, something I found interesting talking with Kay yesterday, we were just talking and just going like, um, I think the discussion started to talk about followers and like, what is the point? Does it really matter to have a bunch of followers? And, um, you know, it it doesn't, it should matter if you have talent. And then we started discussing, it's like, yeah, you kind of need both. You totally need both. Um, But the one thing that is more important, and I hate to say it, is the followers. The talent is to get the followers. Because if you think about it, that's what people care about. You know, why do we care? Why are uh, singers so, so wealthy? Why are the Kardashians so wealthy? You know, it's... They're they brilliant they're business talented, people, right? whatever. Yeah, yeah. But in the end, they learned how to control attention to such high levels. And it, like actual regarded skills. What are they? I'm not, I, I'm sure they're skillful in their ways, but um, like, are they, a, you know what I mean? Like, oh, that athlete is famous because they can really play tennis well or that person's really famous because they can really sing well maybe they're famous for famous sake i mean they've they've made a, a business out of their family name could in, in that sense they, could they're be. the first influences if you call it that because, but uh, like skill wise it's hard to pinpoint and say yeah their skill is this Right. And really like their biggest commodity is like their skill is really um, making people's heads turn the direction that they want. How are they doing that? It doesn't matter. And that's that was the discussion. It was a very interesting, weird discussion because it's like same with artists. You know, if you get people's heads turning the right way, not in an angry way, but in a nice way towards you that's all you need because when you have a million people turning their heads i just saw lois post last week she hit two million followers you know incredible yeah and she has a lot of skill but would people still spoke about sorry she spoke with um the gentleman from art cafe and she said some really interesting things on how to promote yourself on Instagram. Yeah. I, I highly, highly recommend people listen to that because she said things about the visuals and also the language. The branding. You carry yourself. Yeah, the branding. Yeah. Uh, Lois, that's a topic I'm highly interested in as well because, you know, I'm kind of based on the internet, right? So that, that becomes very important to me. But... Um, yeah, I've had a bunch of conversations where we sat down together and Lois was talking about branding and her social media and stuff. It's very, yeah, she's she's a smart cookie, that's for sure. Um, yeah, it's, it's not about the skill, I think. Like, well, I mean, it is the skill, like you said. There's a skill in that, right? Yeah. There's a skill in yeah, that. It's a different skill. It's not the art skill. Right. Right. And and you know like what I got hung up on like in the beginning is you know let's not think about the goal let's just get the art better. And I, I see a lot of people stuck in this as well where you you in this in this like continuum of improving your skill and grinding and grinding but like the goal isn't set clear and neither um you know like basically the thinking is if your skill gets to a certain level then people will notice you. But I don't think that comes hand in hand with followers or whatever these days. So does that make sense? It does. It does. And I feel like I'm 
it's almost like I'm trying to disagree with you on purpose, but I'm not, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm just really, like, I want to make sure that there's an avenue for for every kind of way of thinking that's legitimate. So, you know, for example, uh, Kim jong Gi doesn't speak mm. English. How do you get over a million followers, right? Um, right. Because especially well, in the beginning, especially in the beginning when nobody knows you and you just have your art, you're just showing your art. Um, then there's a, there's a few... There's a few artists that I follow where it's like they don't really, they just literally just post their art. So it's like the ability to know branding, the ability to navigate social media the way that Loish masterfully does is super important. But also her ability to create beautiful imagery becomes super important. And then the last... And could you survive off of only one, right? That's an interesting question. Could you survive or thrive? Because we're not just trying to survive here. Could you thrive from only doing awesome art? I think so. Actually, that's actually a very interesting topic as well because right you know like if you do there's there's entertainment art and you work for others then you also can work for yourself which actually means working for many of your fans so that's a different story so you, you can either be yeah it's like um well could your could people... your art get so darn good that you don't need to say a damn thing and people will gravitate towards we'll just it flock to you. yes yeah. And I, I think the answer is yes. And then this is the harder kind of question, I think. Is it possible to also thrive if you have a no good art skills, but you're very good at branding, very good at posting? I think the answer is but, yes again. Bobby, it, it depends on if you branding like as yourself or are you branding like the, the art as a separate product because there are some people on i don't think it matters uh, because okay. you can find right. successful examples of both you can find successful examples of people branding really bad art very very well and you can find examples of people branding just themselves as artists really really well and maybe they're not that good at art or good in a sense that we might find uh, that that's good art you know so for example um i remember hearing this thing where it was like there's this very popular channel i don't know if it's still popular but it's called angry orange on youtube ah yes <laughs> Right and I do remember that. Yeah. Supposedly, that's not drawn very well. I don't really remember it that well, but I kind of remember it was very crude, um, and that got really, really popular. You know, uh, art skill wise, what do you, what would you rate it? You wouldn't probably give it a very high grade. Right. Like, what about exploding kittens? Uh, I follow the artists on Instagram. Sure, that's a little bit of both. I think. You know, it's like some nice art skills, some appealing art skills. Uh, super funny idea. I think the posting, the super branding. Super grotesque ideas. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, that yes, it's it, like the the core of that. I think is the fact that they appeal to emotions. Because the fun, the you're hitting it right on the head. Orange. Yeah, yeah. Th the angry that's... orange is a comical, comedic value, right? Oh, that's totally where where I was getting to as well, it's the emotional impact, right? It's that emotional impact that you get from that person's creation that will make you gravitate towards it. If it really hits it on the head, right? When I read Loish's uh, posts, I'm like, yeah, that's my friend. <laughs> Even though we yeah, are I friends, feel, I, I feel, feel like, like I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. And that's, that's totally on purpose. I'm sure of it. Um, 
Yeah, she spoke about how to package your art because right. there's like a fine balance of trying to be do art for like followers' sake, and, and it can appear disingenuous, you know. Um, yeah. Especially when I see an account full of like memes. Um, or the same and, kind of headshot, you know, here's another headshot. Here's another right. headshot. And it's like, okay, do you really enjoy drawing that profile shot that much and you don't want to draw anything below a neck? You know, I wonder. <laughs> it's like that I, kind of no, thing. But I mean, it's, I've, I've seen people that can successfully brand themselves just doing that. And, and I don't, you know no no hard feelings to them that's how they possibly make a living but um i think the most lasting and impactful things like you say is the emotion like the fact that your art can connect it's an emotional it. impact so yeah, yeah you've totally like you like i said you've totally hit it on the head um if you're if with your post you have this intention for the viewer to feel a certain thing and you really nail it and you really make them feel it then they will very likely unless you're just being mean or something with your intentions otherwise they will like it and they will share it you know when something gives them that kind of that strong emotion so really good emotions are funny right i love doing funny stuff as many people know uh when people are laughing that is infectious and a lot of people the thing that they spread the most to other people that sh they share to other people are funny things right here's a funny clip check check that out uh awe-inspiring things exactly. <laughs> if something you look at it and you're just like awe-inspired you're just like wow that gets very you're right like the or is like a little bit less effective than funny because like that's what i find with like creating cool looking epic like level kinds of art sure is that people look at it and go cool that's another awesome. one and then they don't another one that's horrible is angry anger anger spreads like crazy as well you just go on twitter i'm sure you'll find a lot of <laughs> anger you say something like controversial yeah that's one way to generate attention some yeah. people imagine you drew something awful. controversial imagine right. you drew something offensive that will spread really fast too but you know that's why i was saying the if you're hitting the the audience's um emotional uh, heartstrings in the right way then it'll be good for you. And that's why I made sure to say in the right way, because you could totally hit it in a way where it spreads like crazy, but in the wrong way. Right? Well, anyhow, we're approaching the end of this uh, painting here. So I want to thank you so much for this wonderful conversation. This has been lovely. So right now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go to a few more questions and try to answer as many questions as I, as I can before the uh, stream is done. Sound good? Okay. Well, uh, stay safe in British Columbia. I believe that's where she was saying that she is right now. Uh, Albino Croc on Slido asks, if you're stuck on a painting and don't know how to progress, do you have a checklist you go over to help you uh, get a head start. Any other solutions to the situation? A checklist. That's a good one. So one is look at it from far away. That one's easy. When you look at it from far away, do you understand it? Does it say everything that you wanted to say in the right amount? Like, okay, yeah, I kind of noticed that, but how much do I want to notice that? Do I want to notice it less? Maybe... I want to see this first and then that second and this third. Uh, do I want to notice it more? Flipping the image. Hey, that hey, one's Bobby. a... Hi. Hi, Patricia. Sorry to interrupt you, uh, but Michelle messaged me that she uh, disconnected suddenly. <laughs> so uh, Oh, no on. problem. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, thanks, Patricia. Uh, so, yeah, mirror image. That's always a good one. 
you stare at an image long enough, you kind of start to correct things with your eyes, but not your brush sometimes. And it's with that flipping where all of a sudden you could see your image uh, kind of with fresh eyes again. Another one is transitions. So when one thing transitions from one element to another element, does it make sense? That's another thing I think about as well. Like, uh, okay, well, going from this leg to the front paw, if I didn't have this bush in the way, would they still connect? Is there the proper transition here? Um, scales, texture, that's another one that comes to mind like, okay, how does it go from the hair on the head to the, the fur on the chest or on the back? Because most of the time it's going to be different. The hair on your hands are going to, if you're a creature or if you've got hairy hands, <laughs> are going to be different than the fur on your chest. Things like that. Um, another one would be, where does my eye go? If I looked at this painting, I just kind of glanced at it. Where would my eye go first? Where would it go second? Where would it go third? And so on and so forth. Are they going to the right places and staying there for the proper amount of time? Now, how can I control that? It's with contrast, right? Contrast will control where your eye goes. Bump up the contrast, your eyes will go towards that point. But too much contrast, they'll go towards that point and go, ugh, that's too garish, too much contrast. Okay. Um, yeah. I think that's, I guess, the overall feeling. You know, that's the ultimate what is this thing making me feel? Is that how I want to feel? Stuff like that. Uh, you can see now I brought in the previous study, right? The Dolores study from Westworld because I wanted to bring in influences of that kind of lighting, different color. So you could say I'm kind of taking a little bit from that uh, Frederick Remington study that we did in week four as well with the green and everything. This was really fun though. You know, uh, I especially, the girl was a struggle for me, uh, but it was a fun struggle and I've, I can feel the improvements bubbling underneath the surfaces. And I'm sure you guys have been doing that as well if you've been following along and doing the exercises and such. Um, but I really like the guy with the mask. I did that one so quick. And I was like, yeah, that's all I kind of need there. So I, I felt good about that. Um, the thing I didn't like about this painting there's a bunch of things i wish the woman looked more realistic she still doesn't look realistic enough for me uh, but i didn't like how the background fades to such a dark black but um in terms of importance it wasn't that important to me so i didn't really worry about it that much but I do, I do want to mention, like, if you look at the very first study that I did in week one and you watch the progression and everything, and if you watched all of them, you'll start to see that I'm grabbing certain influences from certain studies, right, from the past. If you watch the way that I'm painting and everything, you'll start to see it going faster and faster, uh, perhaps steps combining more and more. And that helps with the speed as well. Things to look for in your own studies. All right. So 
why don't we go to some more of these Slido questions. I'll try to do as many of them as I can because there's a lot. Uh, Albino Croc, if you're stuck on a painting and, oh, okay, did that one. Anonymous, hey, Bobby, do you think art college is worth it? Or would I get better instead by doing schoolism, mentorship, etc.? I went to art college and uh, I really feel like I needed to go to art college because I didn't have enough discipline to study on my own. I would think that that's the very first question that you ask yourself. If you're disciplined enough to take courses and all that stuff, and for me, you know, I'm in like I'm like 19, 20 years old. I wanted the college experience, you know, which wasn't really the college experience that I thought, uh, you know, because like you, you watch. Yeah, it's art college. Kay's like, oh, yeah, because it's art college. But you watch those movies uh, of frats and uh, that movie Old School or Animal House and all these things. And college is like this giant party. That's what I kind of thought it was, and it wasn't. Um, you can still have great experiences. Kay says you can still have great experiences. Of course, I had the best experience because that's where I met you, Kay. It's always the, the person that <laughs> Yes, uh, it depends on the attitude. I couldn't agree more. So I would just say that I felt like art college for me was worth it because I didn't have the discipline to just do it by myself, to you know learn by myself and everything. Um, and it wasn't that expensive for me. You know, for me, it was... It was about $6,000 for a year, and it was only three years. So, you know, $27,000 altogether, including, like, my rent and stuff. I think it was around there. And that, that became a worthwhile investment for me. Paid it off, I think, in like a year and a half or something like that. Uh, wasn't too hard. Yeah. But so long winded answer here. All those reasons, I would say go to art school. If you are not very disciplined, if it's something that you can afford and something that won't kind of mess up your future getting out there. You know, because once you get out there, you have a certain amount of time before you have to start paying that debt back um, for many countries, many places, right? So that's going to be important. But if you do have the discipline, if you don't have a lot of time, if you, any other reason, if you love art and you're willing to, you don't need somebody to kind of steer you away from parties and all that stuff like I did, I guess, then I, w I would a thousand billion percent say, if I was to do it all over again, I went over this in last week's stream. With what I know now, but none of the talent, I would a thousand percent go through schoolism. I would go through schoolism. I would attend events when everything opens back up. I would attend, attend like any online event that I try to find. Um, any groups, things like that. And I would be so disciplined and I would put that money towards things like equipment. Uh, all the money that I'm saving, put it to, towards equipment, towards mentorship, towards you know a million other things. Artists are nice people. We're generally very nice people for every jerk that you meet you'll probably you could probably find three really awesome people you know artists uh and many of them it's like you could tell them yeah i will pay you this much money a month for me to just come to your place once a month have an hour and a half two hours with you right going over the stuff that i did and having you paint and draw over top. 
there would be so many artists out there that would totally do that. And I have a sneaking suspicion that many of them, if, especially if you're struggling, uh, when they see the passion, they see the effort that you're putting in, and they see perhaps the things that you are sacrificing, uh, they'll just teach you for free a lot of times. That's what I remember doing that in college. I was you know, tutoring somebody and found out that they were spending their food money to pay me to tutor them. I was like, keep the money. You know, I'll just keep tutoring you. And I'm just like everybody else, you know. Most people will be happy to. Um, or at least that's what I think. Anyways, uh, there you go, everybody. Painting is done. Get on that Schoolism subscription because we got about two weeks left of the sale. It's a huge one. It's an awesome one. You save $100 off of a $300 annual subscription. All right, so you're paying like $200. And that gives you access to everything on Schoolism for an entire year. Over 30 plus courses. Uh, and there you go. All right. So tune back in next week where we will be doing week nine. This one is going to be a great one. We're going back to animals, and it'll be super fun. And you can join me next Tuesday, same time, same uh, YouTube channel. Take care, everybody. Stay safe, and I'll see you next week.